Cool. So, thank you for coming to Let's Build a Blog with Cloud Foundry. Let's Build a Blog with Cloud Foundry. Uh, this is a talk. Um, but what, like, what am I trying to achieve with this talk? What I want to do is try and uh, try and explain what I think is the Zen of CF. Right? Like, CF largely gets out of your way, um, and I want to show you how you use CF well. Right? It's a very easy thing. We're just going to build a blog. But I hope we'll talk a little bit about how you use Cloud Foundry to build a blog and how it's different from how you might use other systems to build a blog. Um, this is an opinionated talk. Um, I, I am going to say some opinions. Other opinions are available, um, though not from me. Um, this is how I think about stuff. Um, uh, how, right. Um, uh, this is how I think about stuff today. Uh, I may change my mind. I'm open to other um, opinions about how we should build software, but maybe some of these ideas will be uh, useful. So um, I think the core thing about CF is the abstraction is code. Um, why is that? Because actually we use computers to solve hard problems. right? We are actually um, doing stuff that's hard. Sometimes we forget that. We forget that we use computers to do hard things. Um, in the last like three decades, if you think about it, we have gone from you know BIOSes to people on the moon to driverless cars, and then off to the right of that is like you know Fortnite and uh, iOS apps that let you order ice cream to your door, which is a thing my girlfriend does. Which how did we do this, right? Um, I think there's two things, right? There's two things that have ever worked that have let us with the same size of chimp brain go from BIOSes to men on the moon um, to um, really annoying computer games uh, that people should stop playing. Uh, those are removing accidental complexity. right? So that is the, uh, this is, these, these are literally, we've known this since the mythical man month, right? Like Brooks, like 1983 or something. Um, remove accidental complexity, um, as in uh, the less you can focus on the problems you cause for yourselves, the more you can focus on the essential complexity of the problem you're trying to solve and use good abstractions. Right? The reason we can build a driverless car is we don't do it uh, in, in assembly language in C. We have higher and higher level abstractions. Um, that's accidental complexity. That's mythical moment. Fine. So let's talk about abstractions for a second. I just want to give an analogy. Um, C. I'm gonna, we're going to play a game. The game is called Operating System or Web App. Right? I say a language. And you say whether you should use it to build an operating system or a web app. C. Let's see if you are right. <laughs> well done. OK. Um, let, let's, let's play another. Ruby, operating system or web app? Yes. Uh, if anybody is building an operating system with Ruby, come and talk to me afterwards. Uh, I think I can help you. I think. <laughs> so the point is that different languages have different sweet spots. It doesn't make C better and Ruby better. It makes C better at a certain thing and Ruby better at a certain thing. Right? Different tools are, are suited for different jobs. And that brings me to Cloud Foundry. Cloud Foundry is a high level approach that doesn't try and solve all problems, but tries to solve some problems well. It's a high level abstraction to try and make you faster. Um, and that abstraction is code, not containers or orchestration or pipelines or stateful stuff, code. That's what I want to try and show you, plus services, right? Because you do need some states. The trick with states is to make it someone else's problem. So let's build a block. Um, this is structured as like four opinions punctuated by a bit of coding. Um, opinions could also be rants. Um, you have heard the first one, which was on accidental complexity. Um, let's build a bit of code. Um, this is where I have to like do a font size check. Um, this is too big, right? Yeah. Is that kind of visible at the back? All right. All right. So let's. Uh, what should we call our blog? Uh, for, call it blog. Whoops. Um, thank, thank God we haven't had an inventive audience on the <laughs> peak of their naming abilities. Um, 
so how do we get started writing a blog, right? We're going to need a Docker file. We're going to need some deployment YAML. Um, new. Main.go. Package main. Funk main. It's not called package main. Um, package blog. Um, so what I'm going to do is build the back end, right? I'm just going to build a back end for the blog, right? So um, I have what's called a snippet. Um, let's me do that. Let's put it in data blog.json. Um, and what does JSON, uh, what does blog.json do? Um, it's going to new encoder wa dot encode. Um, and then we'll like give back some the posts, right? We'll give the list of posts back. So let's do that. Um, working backwards. Uh, and what would a post have? It would have a title. Whoops. I have no idea what I just did. Typing is hard on a MacBook. <laughs> title body, cool. Um, who would like to name our blog post? What's the title of our blog post? The treasure trove. This is what's called audience participation, friends. Great. Um, and it says, in the treasure trove, we will find a Jules. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I approve. Um, so why doesn't that work? Is that it? Computers are hard. What's wrong with this? What's, what's wrong with this sentence? That is. Right? Oh, oh, it formatted. That probably means it worked. Yeah. Good. Um, so that will print out our stuff, right? Um, and how do I, oh, I need to do a listen and serve, right? Um, but first, like, so start thinking, how do I run this? How am I going to test this? Listen and serve, os.get port, nil, done. Okay. So how do I run this? Go run. I hope people know enough, like, like if you don't know Go, it doesn't really matter. It's just the language that I know. Um, Port equals, let's say, 8080, go run main.go. Whoops. Oh, I still have that running. Um, can't run non-main package. Never live code. Oh, we have to create a go.mod file because we're not in a go path. I think it's called module blog, is it, I think? Does anyone know how you write these like um, go.mod files? These are, these are new. I don't really understand them. Go mod init. Aha, here we go. So yeah, you get rid of go mod and you say go mod init blog. Cool. This worked when I did it before. Module blog. Can't run non-main non package. We might have to put it in a go path. That would suck. So here's our thing. It's in package blog, right? Look, this is on you as much as it's on me if we get this wrong. <laughs> um, go mod in it. Let's do it the full way then. I have to do this? All right. Oh, you are, yes. That is, that is embarrassing um, for everyone else. Yeah, there we go. And that is why we do not live code. All right, so 
Uh, if we curl that, uh, curl localhost 8080 data post dot json data blog dot json i did this time just to mix it up great we have some json good so that is our back end what shall i rant about now microservices all right so we're going to talk about microservices because they are the hot thing here is the flow chart this is what i call the microservices flow chart i told you there are opinions um, if you are less than a two-person, two-pizza team, that is a team that you can feed with two pizzas, microservices, not for you. Uh, you, you. You've caused complexity. You will not get, in my opinion, enough back uh, from doing that. Um, if you have, there's a proviso as well, if you have more microservices than teams, so if you have five teams and 50 microservices, you are probably not getting that much value from your microservices. There is an overhead to microservices, which is absolutely worth it if you can only solve the size of problem that you are solving by having more teams um, than people. Because within a single uh, monolith, if your team can do pairing, do TDD, do anything like that, you can manage that. If you need to scale up, that's where microservices are useful. Um, so in other words, can, if you cannot do it with one team, that is when I think you should use microservices. Um, yeah. So, uh, to fake out a good reason to have a microservice, let's build a UI. So what we are going to do, um, we are going to build a UI for our blog. Uh, we are going to use a language um, that I like to call React, because it is called React. Uh, blog UI. Uh, so for anyone um, who just joined us, um, we've uh, took a, a poll of the room to decide a clever name for our blog, and we came up with blog. Cool. Um, so we're going to create, just so, we're just going to create a React app, right? Just create a React app. Um, and one of the things I want to try and like show you is most of what I should be doing if I'm building something like a blog or like most things is just writing code, right? I'm going to use um, the programming languages test suites. I'm going to use the programming languages deployment tools. I'm not going to start spinning up containers and stuff at this point, right? I'm just going to run it. So we've got our blog, and this is blog-ui. Um, and we can edit our app.js. Um, so we're gonna, this is uh, going to be ugly. Um, this is not gonna be, I'm not gonna do some CSS here. Um, I am going to do uh, posts.map. Oh, uh, so posts.map p, and inside you get a post and you get h1 uh, p.title, and you get the body, right? P dot body div div good. Uh, does anyone want to spell check me? Uh, see that was an intentional mistake. To see if you're paying attention and you were not. Come on, folks. Cool. Um, so post dot map. Um, we need to make that posting. Um, and let's start off by just like creating a fake one, right? So we'll just do posts and. Um, title, high, um, body, there, right? Const. That post needs to be plural. Yeah. yeah, see? You're getting there. You're getting there. We're learning as we go. Um, so how would I run that? I do yarn run, yarn start. Um, so this will be like just the front end, just like just coding it out. And we're imagining that we're, uh, yes, why not? Why not? We'll have ports, whatever. Um, so we're imagining we're two separate teams, right? So I'm going to develop my UI reasonably separately. Start the development server. Did anyone watch Crystal Maze? Start the fans, please. Is that just like a UK thing? All right, it says hi there. Good. 
Right, so what we want to do now is integrate these two things together, right? So how do we integrate these things together? Um, there is a great thing for React. You can do this, you can do package.json, um, and we can add a thing called, an element called proxy. And what proxy does is it says, when you access slash whatever, forward it to something else so that you can integrate two things easier, right? So uh, you, in a browser, you can't directly access a URL for security. Uh, so we're going to access local and React will just proxy it. Uh, so we will use uh, localhost, um, uh, localhost data, and I think we did it on 8080. Oh, I actually don't need data. Localhost 8080, good. Um, so what this will do, around the microphone. What this will do is anything that goes to localhost, it will forward it over to um, localhost 8080. If it's not asking for JSON, it will forward it to 8080. Um, and what we want to do is we want to now grab it from that URL, right? So we want to grab it from the data URL. Uh, so we can build a little um, use fetch. Uh, so function use fetch URL. Uh, and so to do a fetch, we want state and set state. Uh, this is this new React hook stuff, which is super awesome. State, and we need to do a use effect. Um, it doesn't really matter if you know what I'm doing um, here. Um, so I do a use effect and I say fetch URL, then um, we get the response and I'd like the response.json and then um, give me that JSON and set state with the JSON. That looked about right. Return state. Cool. Um, and with that, I'm going to say use fetch. Uh, and I want to fetch data blog.json, I think is what we said. Spell checking as we go. Is that about right? What's wrong with this? It's really hard because you can't see the end. So we've got fetch, not then, response, then. That all looks right. All right. Who helped me last time? Fetch.url, then response, response.json, dot then json, set state json. Yeah, one more close brackets, isn't it? It's literally the hardest thing in programming, isn't it? It's just like brackets. Um, oh, of course, right, so function. I think that should do it. Uh, I don't think we care about anything else. State, use state. We need to declare it because imports, use state. And use effect. Good. Right. So we now have a UI. I'd really like to get to the Cloud Foundry bit soon. Um, we're close. We're close. So let's boot that back up. So we've got our blog post running on 8080. We've got our thing. We should be able to load it up. Well, hello. Um, and did we get any fetches? So now we can debug. Um, one thing that's quite cool about this way of working is that you just have all your native tools, right? This isn't running in a container or doing anything funky. Um, so if I look at X, ooh, lots of stuff happening there. We're going a little crazy. Uh, 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 uh. I have a feeling we're getting a ton of 404s. Let's see. I'm running out of time. We might, might have to go to the next step. You can't do it. You can't do it. All right. So. 
right so let's look at the console and I want to look at what's going on in the network I'm looking at XXCR oh so we got the blog back we got our blog posts there they are from our XX, XXCR request um, but it didn't make it into our thing so let's have a look why isn't that working got posts which use app post.map all of this looks good did a set state when the JSON came back I returned the state uh, does anyone know why that's not working we got the state we know it came back because we saw it come back did a fetch, and we put the response. We got the JSON. We got the JSON. I mean, we can do do a bit of logging. vlogging I think we do not have enough time to skip we might have to skip to the next bit and what's what's in our logs so we even logged it got all the way back Oh, wait, you know what I think it might be? Oh, this is sad, very sad. No, it's looking for lowercase. Um, that is annoying. Um, so I can put it back, and what I will do... So this, this is actually okay. All we, all we actually want to do is edit our main.go, and what we should have done is put struct tags on here, right? That's not the one. JSON title, good. Jason, body, good, good, cool, yeah, yeah, thank you, all right, now everyone just compile that in your head for me, yeah, how confident do we feel, all right, Yes. Boom. All right, great. So we now have a UI. I want to do a little rant. Containers. I think what a lot of people do right now is start putting this in containers. We are not going to put this in containers because it is a Go application and a JavaScript application, and there is nothing magic about either of those two things. Um, here is my container workflow. By the way, I, I work on containers in Cloud Foundry. I run the garden team in Cloud Foundry. Um, I love containers. Containers are brilliant. I just don't think most people should touch them most of the time. You don't actually need them for most things. Uh, if you are a PaaS, you need containers. If you are CI, you need containers. So by all means, set up some CI to convert all your code into containers. But most people should be able to CF push or something analogous. Um, are you coupled to an OS? This is another good reason for a container. If you are doing something that is genuinely coupled to an OS, it matters what OS you are running on, then you are going to have to decouple yourself from an OS and have a custom Docker file. Um, I would argue you should try not to be coupled to an OS. Um, if this seems crazy, let me point out, every day, we load JavaScript via our web browsers, and it does not come packaged with a browser to run that JavaScript in. It works fine if your language is encapsulated, right? Um, Go just make static binaries. They'll run in anything. Uh, Java literally runs in a JVM. We don't actually need to isolate ourselves from the OS if we write simple code, right? So just push code. Uh, Lock in. Oh, if I don't use Docker files and stuff, I'll be tied in 
It's just code, right? What I've written so far is just code. I didn't touch Cloud Foundry. I didn't do any Cloud Foundry stuff. Um, uh, I could just add a Docker file to any of that stuff. So now let's do a CF push. So what we're going to do, we are going to first, we are going to push our blog to the interwebs. Um, so let's do it here. Let's have this one. Surprisingly difficult to do when it's like really big text size. So um, uh, I'm not going to push it as JavaScript. I am actually going to build it. So I'm going to do a yarn build. And what that does is it packages it, because like the, all the various NPMs and stuff are enormous. And so if I do a CF push, it's going to upload all of this JavaScript stuff. I'm just going to build it. Um, and then we end up with this build folder, um, which has inside it um, all the stuff that I need to push up. Um, if I touch build a static file, um, that will tell Cloud Foundry that it's just static, just serve it with a static thing. Um, and I can do a CF push, blog, um, and I'll say dash p build. Um, that's it. That's all we need to do to run that on the cloud. It's now going to run on the cloud. Um, that proxy thing will no longer run. So what we're going to have to do is run our uh, back end, our Go app, uh, and we want to run that on slash data. So anything on slash data, we actually want to serve the Go app instead. Um, luckily, um, we are using CF, uh, and that's quite easy. I can do CF um, bind root. Oh, at first I should push it. So I can push this application. Uh, let's create a manifest because it's Go. Um, whoops. I do not have time. Um, OK, I'm going to skip it. Um, you use bind root. You bind the root of that Go application to slash data. You now have those two things communicating. Um, I want to have enough time to get to the next step. So I'm just going to get to the next step. Opinion four, state. Uh, I think this is probably the most important thing that I want to say. And I have three minutes, so I'm going to say it. Um, what is wrong with it? Oh, uh, OK. I need you to do a visual picture, because these are not the correct slides. Um, what is wrong if there was a picture of you? So if you, if you go to any Kubernetes website or Docker website, and you look at a picture of, of a simple app, you may have to Google it, what you will see is a MongoDB or a Redis plus an Nginx plus your application server. What is wrong with that picture? Do not push Mongo to cloud, right? Do not push database to a cloud. Unless you want to be a DBA, use a service for that. You should be pushing code to a cloud. State is bad. State is <laughs> bad. Um, why? Because state is the magic trick that turns cattle into pets. State is why I can't throw away any one of my replicas that I want. When something goes wrong, if there's state, I have to worry about it. That's why you need to back that machine up. You need to investigate when it goes wrong. Uh, you need to think about how I scale that up and down, because you can't just add instances easily. Um, state is hard. What do I do about state? Make it someone else's problem. That is how you are able to move fast, develop iOS apps that deliver ice cream to my door, which is important, you state. Um, so my flowchart is, are you a DBA? If so, state is fine. Uh, would you like to be a DBA? If so, state is fine. Um, otherwise, no. Um, how would I add state? Um, I don't quite have time to do this. Um, but what I would suggest is, for example, I use I, IBM pays my bills. So if I go to IBM um, and log in, uh, I will see, and this is the nice thing about uh, a Cloud Foundry system, I just see a catalog of services that can do my state for me. Um, so if I created one, uh, doop, 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 doop. if I created one of those services, I have created one here, um, then I can just bind it to my app. So I say CF bind service and bind that service to my app, and my app will get an environment variable with the username and password for that service in it. That is how I do state. So if I take my main.go and just get the username and password, um, quite a good one is, in my opinion, Cloudant, but use anything. The nice thing about Cloudant is you can just store JSON stuff in it. You just store JSON documents. So you take the, the blog post that you want, you store them in Cloudant, you bind it to your app, and you will have an end-to-end -end blog. 
And all you will need to do in your development pro process is code and then push. No containers, no deployment YAMLs, no orchestration or scheduling or anything else, just your actual business value. Um, and that is the edge of my time. Um, so we didn't quite build a blog uh, with Cloud Foundry. Um, but nevertheless, this is the zen of Cloud Foundry, according to me. Um, number one, avoid accidental complexity. Um, if you need to do some low-level stuff, you're going to have to do some low-level stuff. Um, but try to, try to operate at the highest level that you can um, because your problems are complicated enough. If you can spend time either on container orchestration or improving your login flow, making your code faster, adding a feature, prefer the latter things. Um, I, in my opinion, most people, the abstraction should be code. Cloud Foundry is one way of doing that. Um, if you're building for something like Kubernetes, build some CI that makes that process repeatable. Um, microservices are fine, but don't go crazy. Uh, if you use CF, um, it's quite easy to run a lot of microservices, just CF apps. Um, don't run 10,000 microservices unless you have 10,000 teams, and consider whether you need 10,000 teams. Um, and most importantly, state is bad, so make it someone else's problem. Um, and that's, uh, that's not building a blog in Cloud Foundry, but at least maybe we got to a little bit of the zen of Cloud Foundry, which was the more important point. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.